live from the FIA Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Welcome back to Barcelona, everybody. Ahmed Hussein is here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Ethernet Business Unit at QLogic. Uh, Matt, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me here. You're welcome. So you are the guy who runs the, the Ethernet business, which came over from Broadcom, Broadcom. relatively new to QLogic, new, four mm -hmm. months. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us about the Ethernet business unit, why it came to be, why the acquisition, and what the mission is. Well, one of the key things in the industry, as you see, that the I.O. is becoming more critical, especially with the uh, introduction of cloud, cloud in infrastructures, I.O. has become critical, and QLogic has been in the I.O. business for many years, uh, doing the fiber channel, fiber channel sense, and storage, and we felt that this would be a great place for us to expand our expertise and capability. And the acquisition was really to establish us in that business space, more specifically around Ethernet, uh, as well as our core competency around fiber channel. So that's where the acquisition really... So uh, complement to what you're doing in fiber channel. The absolutely. world's going uh, the internet. It's, the world's yeah, going to Ethernet. Internet, yeah. uh, but of course, fiber channel, fiber channel not going away. But no, all the growth absolutely. of the market really is in the Ethernet space. So you got to have a play there. Absolutely. And so right. Broadcom was essentially a quasi-competitor at the time. Yes, yes. Right? Yeah, in that space. And we acquired them, the assets of Broadcom, that we brought it into logic to establish the business. Yeah. yeah, and Broadcom's doing some really interesting things uh, sort of in their core competency, yeah. slogging it out in this space is not, you know, not, not you, guys, you guys at Emulex love it. You know? <laughs> it's just like, you live for the hard businesses, and it's yeah. hard, right? It's yeah, a challenging it's very business. Well, you've got to imagine where QLogic is, right? And we have a great competency with uh, working with OEMs, providing all the software layers that run on top of our solutions uh, today. Uh, and as you as you look at that uh, capability, uh, QLogic had had a great synergy of bringing that plus uh, the uh, technology that we acquired from Broadcom. So we bring that quality and confidence and the software layer and stacks on top of the solutions that we can uh, deliver to our customers like HP and others. So okay, so you talk about the, let's talk about more about some of the drivers. You mentioned cloud. Uh, I mean, you've got multi cores coming in. Um, yeah. You got. You know, Intel still doing its thing. You got virtualization. Mm -hmm. You have Flash now yeah. driving. Um, so you have these multiplicative effects that are driving I/O through the roof. So you have to be able to manage that effectively, efficiently, and, and, and deliver it. Talk about that challenge technically and how you guys are resolving that. Well, one of the key things of uh, I/O is that um, everybody says, oh, "Okay, well, let's just." move the bytes from memory out to the wire and backwards and forwards, there's really nothing much to it, but it's much more complex, especially with the advent of virtualized environments and what's going on with the amount of data that you now have to move in and out of the server uh, in terms of storage and, and the actual applications themselves. So not only do we have uh, more data being pushed through the pipe, but you now have to be able to do some unique things with that data and managing how that data moves from point A to point B on the networking. So I.O. Uh, throughput becomes a critical factor in making your applications work. So what we could do is uh, take some of that burden that usually sits in the CPU side, bring it to closer to the wire, and improve the performance of the connection. So different protocol usages from running very low latency transaction-oriented applications to streaming video, right? Those have got two separate uh, needs but running on the same wire. So some of the technologies that we create inside the solution there allows us to more effectively bring that. Forward. So, okay, and, and so your your background is in, in storage and, and networking. You guys Absolutely, sort of sit at yeah, the intersection yeah. of that. Um, let's talk about mobile. Uh, the mobile apps are sort of changing everything. Yeah. The network, everybody talks about the network, it's flattening, it's going east-west. As, as a networking guy, i got to ask you, I mean, storage is scaled out, computers scaled out. Yeah. When's networking going to scale up? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> so, um, 
you know that, that that's that's the that's the that's the opportunity, right? Uh, when you look at uh, networking scaling out and becoming uh, distributed, um, it, well, naturally it's distributed, but the function of the network being distributed and becoming more soft oriented and being more configurable as the, the workloads demands come in, that's where I think the opportunity of the scale out is going to happen. So we're all about making that happen uh, at the network. What about HP Discover? You hear what's, what's the relationship with HP uh, in your space? Well, I, mean, I know well, QLogic and HP have had a long, long relationship. relationship. So, actually, in fact, uh, our Ethernet solutions with HP is in most of their key products through the acquisition of Broadcom and, and our existing fiber channel products. So, we have a lot of uh, connections here with HP. We provide all the IOS uh, capabilities to HP service. So that's where the connection comes from. So. so what are some of the big trends you're seeing from HP and maybe some of your other OEM customers that are, that are pushing you? Well, there's all these um, big cloud discussions going on, but let's uh, sort of try and boil down that, that down a little bit more explicitly. Converged infrastructure is a big theme here. As you can see, there's a lot of people talking about, well, we're not just going to develop you a piece of hardware that you go do your own thing. We'll give you a combined solution set. So with that in mind, how do we play in there and what are we doing to enable those sort of uh, convergent instruments? So that's one of the themes I've heard a lot here. And software everything is another uh, theme that I'm hearing. You know, software defined networks, software defined storage. And so those are the two things that I've seen here across. And, uh, and then all that pulled together through a cloud solutions and cloud services, hybrid, private, and so forth. So a lot of that's dri being driven by the whole hyperscale trend. Yeah. You know, Google, Amazon, Facebook started it all. Maybe Facebook didn't start it all, but certainly Google started it all, and Amazon and Facebook came right in. What does that all mean for a company like QLogic? Well, you know, there is this core enterprise uh, business space that we have, and uh, that's the traditional computing models that you see and have seen for many, many years. We're starting to see that transition now to the more hyperscale class environments. And what that means for us is that how relevant is our solutions going from one environment to the other? And as you pointed out earlier on, the Ethernet or uh, the internet connectivity is a big key asset of, of those new emerging cloud, um, new emerging uh, compute models. So we see the relevance of our solution is attacking some of the uh, barriers that those, uh, uh, those new environments are bringing forward. Like uh, how how effective can we be when you have uh, you know you could have on a single server you can have multiple tenants running different applications how can we be more effective in making those applications perform at the optimum level so we have this concept around having what we call software definable adapters that can run multiple protocols at the same time. So okay, so now historically your enterprise customers I think of them as scale up. Architectures, yeah. you know, many of them. The world's all the new growth is, is scale out. How does that change the way in which you guys design products? I mean, you're obviously shifting some R and D there. And to much if you could talk about that. Yeah. Well, the, the best way to look at it is that uh, the enterprise class has got a much more demanding uh, set of requirements on the Ethernet controllers and the fiber channel adapters around high availability, security. And, and really being a very rock solid uh, type of an environment where they have to have that in mind. When you look at the scale out and hyper scale out, um, they're much more cost driven. So our challenge is really how do we bridge that gap? How do we take some of the capabilities we have in the traditional enterprise world and bring it to the hyper scale uh, environment? So that's one of the key things that we're driving within my, uh, within the, my uh, business unit. So man, you talked about software defined before. Um, it's everywhere. Yeah, everybody's talking software defined, so you got to talk software defined. But I wonder if we could drill that down into the adapter business. So you think of software defined compute, that's what virtualization did. And then you know, VMware talks about bringing that to storage and, and networking, and of course Cisco's talking about that, everybody's talking about that. What does it mean down at the adapter level? Is it essentially virtualizing those those adapter resources, the ports? And the yeah, so for example, there? in our current generation platforms, we introduced some uh, SRIOV type of capabilities and very similar to that, I won't go down all the buzzwords, but basically what we're doing is we're taking a single physical adapter and, and virtualizing uh, the nets or the network interfaces on those virtual adapters. So a single server 
you can have one, two, or 50, or 100 virtual NICs in one physical server. So that's one of the things that we're doing to help the virtualized space. In okay, that. so now, historically, I would I would always have, and I will still, I'm assuming we have redundancy. Absolutely. The, the problem in the past is, in order to get redundant, you put two. You did two, and then two more, and then two more just to have any kind of connectivity. Yeah. So you're able to virtualize that, that resource. What kind of consolidation ratio do you, do you see? Well, uh, if you if you think about the speed of the pipe that you're connecting to now, we're at 10 gig, and 10 gig is really, really at ramping right now. We can see it across the board. So when in a 10 gig pipe, you run multiple NICs, equivalent of one gigs, right, running in that uh, particular space. So when you look at it from that ratio, you, you're sort of saying to yourself, well, I'm going to go from 10 one gig NICs down to one 10 gig NIC and virtualize 10 of those into that same adapter. But what we are actually seeing is that when people take a server and put a 10 gig NIC in there, they're putting redundancy in there, so you've got two ports, a 10 gig. But they're also, it's a one-to-one -one replacement. It's not actually uh, eliminating um, physical connections as much as we people thought that, you know, you're going to take uh, 10 NICs and put them into one. In fact, the connection stays the same, but what's happening is the workload on the servers have increased because of the multi-cores and the virtualization layer. You're now having to create uh, multiple one gig NICs onto a one physical NIC. Yeah, so if you didn't have that approach, you wouldn't be able to run all these workloads. No, and then, then you have resource sharing conflicts, and then what happens if one virtual machine dies, and then you're sharing the same resources with another virtual machine? So all of those things are now eliminated by creating these independent uh, uh, virtual instances of the net. Does the CNA analog apply to, to your business? Right? Absolutely, I mean, it's, it's yeah. Like Conversion network adapters that now... When they first came out, they were substantially more expensive. Where is pricing now relative? Because everybody's complaining, ah, they're so expensive. <laughs> but there was there was the, the promise of consolidation, but but actually it turned into the value was the ability to run multiple workloads so you're saving at the top of the stack. That's right. Well, th that's an interesting thing because in the industry there's this trend to start expensive, right, very complex, and then figure out how to drive the cost and drive it down. And where we are right now is right in the middle of that transition. My belief is in the next four or five years, we're going to see the converge NIC prices, hardware accelerated converge NIC prices, going down in the pricing. And we can see that happening from our perspective as well. So that's a volume play, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. All about. So now think about the cloud, the hyperscale. Yeah. How does QLogic play in that? Well, this cost reduction in schema and following that curve, we can now deploy into these environments where cost sensitivity is important. But again, the performance and the virtualization is a must-have now. You right. can't just do it with dumb old NICs, as we call them, in the old days. So you have to now think about how to do that, and that's what we're bringing to uh, value. So cost. thinking about your sort of end-year plan, however, whatever you're right, knowing, understanding you've only been there for, for four months, but, but I mean, I wonder if you could just sort of share a vision of where you want to take this business, where you're working with Prasad now. I don't know, did you work with him at Intel? Uh, we were, we, yeah. we were, uh, yes, we were together. Yeah. We, we knew each other. We know, time. he's a good friend of the Cube, so we haven't <laughs> seen him in a while, but <laughs> yeah, please send him our best. But where do you guys want to take this business? Well, right now, we wanted to establish the business. So with the acquisition of the Broadcom assets and with QLogic's and capabilities, we've now got a established. We're, we predict ourselves today to be about a number two player in the network, conversion network, network uh, adapters in the business. Where we want to take it next is what we call technology leadership. So we are doing some very interesting and exciting products and we've just announced our next generation uh, being validated by OEMs, 100 gigabit interfaces. So we're increasing the interface speeds on our cards, but also the complexity of what we can put in there, multiple protocols, all the way from RDMA to TCP offload and iSCSI. To net that out, we are now adding more functionality to the adapter, so that's going to be our next stage. A lot, so a lot of innovation. A lot, a lot of, of innovation. A lot of investment. A that. lot of technology. And then following that is what we're going to do is take that same innovation technology we have in our current and next generation and drive the cost infrastructure down so that we can really scale out to a lot more broader volume market space. So that's the three-step vision. We see the we see the what what uh, the guys at HP were calling an aircraft carrier, right? That's what uh, Martin Mikos was calling it. Yeah. Uh, and then the ecosystem around it, all building toward that cloud uh, model yeah. that we're seeing now as uh, mainstream. Five years ago, IT practitioners would roll their eyes at the term cloud. Today, 
it's a standard operating procedure. So, Matt, thanks very much for coming on the Cube. Really appreciate it. I appreciate time. the time. Thank you. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap up HP Discover 2014 from Barcelona right after this.